man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubeck. Touch five people and tell them you had to be here this evening on the left and on the right and tell them you had to be here you had to be here there was nowhere you had to be this is the place to be glory to god hallelujah 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 um i i wanted to make one announcement before we start the service um, we entered a commitment uh, from the beginning of the year. We, if you remember that some of you who watched the crossover service from 2021 into 2022, in one of the prophetic words the Lord gave us that year, if you remember, I spoke about the scarcity of food. How many of you remember that? So, the, and then we went through and started working with a few organizations in the north to feed many people. Um, we worked mostly with the Irene Gleason Foundation. Some of you know it, they're in Kidgum. And we've been doing quite a lot of work. This weekend I'm meeting the team for more work. And uh, we participated today again in what you have heard being called the Karamoja Cry. Um, Pastor Robert Kayanja of uh, Miracle Center Cathedral uh, mobilized the team of people to get some food to people in uh, Karamoja because people have actually been dying because they lack food and because of your generous giving for the beginning we gave 100 million shillings That's what we committed, and we intend to do more, even through the Irene Gleason Foundation. But this I tell us because um, it is appalling to hear that in a country like Uganda, people are still sleeping hungry. And uh, people are dying of starvation in the north. So some of you should remember your brothers, remember your countrymen. We're going to continue. Uh, mobilizing funds to send food up there and clothes and soap and sugar and whatever the Lord impresses on us. We will do it. We have done it and will continue to do that. Even through COVID, some of you know, we did quite a lot in, in feeding families, pastors. Uh, we did the work with hospice. Uh, it's the only palliative, I mean, the major palliative care institute we know in this country, Hospice Africa, to be exact. We gave quite some money in COVID because some of their funders had pulled out. And uh, for a long time, Fanero Money did a lot in Hospice Africa. A lot. A lot. And so we continue to do that. And even today, I committed that I would get that announcement in for whatever the Lord has impressed on your heart. And I've said this again, that no matter how many needs we have as a nation or as a church, it's important not pe for people not to starve before our eyes. So I will ask uh, the team to create a certain uh, a, a provision on the platform for us to give for the people of northern Uganda. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. So let's worship God. Let's worship God. Oh uh -huh. 
Let's sing it again, choir.
Come on, let's all raise our voice and sing that song. Come on.
hold my world in your hand I'm amazed at your love I'm amazed at your love You hold my world in your hand Let's sing it. You hold my word. You hold my word in your hand. Come on. Oh, 
He is exalted, the King is exalted, and I, I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is alone forever.
ever exalted and I need to praise His name.
You may take your seats, choir. Thank you very, very much. What you used to do in club, now you're doing in the presence of God. Oh, welcome back. Praise the Lord. Some, of, some people here have too much dance. That it's only fair. That sometimes they should dance for Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The pastors in the house are here, Fanero pastors. We have another Fanero pastor from Worship Harvest. And you are to Bishop Mukisa. We love that man. Worship Harvest and Fanero, they're like this. We love each other dangerously. Praise the Lord. We have pastors from different churches, Bishop Nathan Wali, Jumba. There are many men and men, women of God that are here. We honor the anointings. Bishop Rock, Nsubuga. <laughs> what a name. Praise God. So we have many pastors and our parents are here. We want to thank God for such a wonderful evening. Those of you who are standing in the back, kindly take your seats so I can start. Um, demystifying some mysteries. <laughs> uh, allow me to bless your offerings, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for these wonderful men and women and their giving. We glorify your holy name for everything they represent. Continue to multiply and increase all their substance. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed and all and said, Today, our mandate is in Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the eighth verse. Solomon gave us a very profound truth, very profound truth in Ecclesiastes, chapter seven, verses eight, that I believe that if you understand very well by this end of this evening, I believe you'll change your world. The Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Let's read it again. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Read it one more time. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Now, when Solomon says this revelation to us, we might find that it's not a reality of experience in some of our lives concerning some of the things we have gone through, concerning some of the experiences we have seen other people go through. It might be hard for us to relate or connect to this kind of language. And the things of God are amazing. It doesn't matter whether it worked for you or it did not, it still abides true. The Bible says that let God be true and every man a liar. Meaning that regardless of what you judge or how you judge it, if God has said it, it's still true even if it did not work for you. For example, we believe in divine healing. But there are people who have prayed for healing and they have not been healed. And some have died. But that doesn't mean that we refuse or disqualify the work and ministry of healing. Whether your beloved one was healed or not, you don't build a doctrine to abdicate this revelation because you don't agree with it or because it's not reconciled to your subjective reasoning. God is still God whether you choose to believe him for healing or not. And there will always be somebody in the world who will believe God for what you're not able to believe him for. And there will always be somebody in the world who will walk in the impossible. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
So you make a decision to either be among those people or stay in the complain as the whiners, the indifferent ones that don't understand how God works. This revelation in Ecclesiastes is so hard to comprehend when your optics are subject to the fallen world. What many people do not see and understand, and this the Lord showed me so greatly many years ago, that we are born into a fallen world. We are born into a judged world. And therefore, we're not able to appreciate the mind of God concerning many things. And so many of us settle with what is fallen. Even at the coming of salvation, we still stay inclined to understand and agree with whatever is fallen. And some of us do not understand that the effectual work of faith was designed by God to help you grasp with both hands what he had originally planned for man. Remember in the beginning, the Bible tells us Adam and Eve were in a garden. But you see, the scriptures also tell us God tells them you shall eat of every tree in the garden, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in that garden, too, the Bible says, was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But in Eden, there were no seasons. There were no seasons. There was never a time when a man walked to a tree and that tree did not have fruit. Why? Because it was a perfect world. When a man walked to a tree and plucked a fruit from it and walked away, in that place, another fruit will immediately grow. Nothing in the Garden of Eden was subject to corruption or decay. That's the mindset and world, Eon, that God had created for every man and woman because they were created in his image and likeness, created he, them, male and female. What does that mean? Everything you see in this physical world after the fall of man, since the fall of man is subject to death, is subject to decay, is subject to corruption. It's corruptible. But in the original sense, it was never corruptible. Do you know that before the fall, man did not eat to live? Because death did not exist. Think about it. There was no death. So let's just say Adam and, and Eve have not eaten for a month, two months, one year. If there is no death, how can they die? Do you understand what I'm saying? So what we eat to live, yeah, because we are in a fallen world. If we do not eat, our bodies start to corrupt. They start to transact. When the Bible says that you have to kill the transactions of the body, that's what it means. From the fall of man, our bodies, our physical selves started to transact with the fallen world. But before that, they were not corruptible. So nothing transactionally would come to them if it was evil. Are you following what I'm saying? That is in Eden, the garden. So they ate just to enjoy, for pleasure, just to crave and say, let me eat this, and then they eat it. It's just how man was. You see? And then man falls, and then judgment is passed on man and the earth, unfortunately. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 18, and let's discuss this. For I reckon, Paul says, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You know, many people read that portion of scripture and they think of the glory revealed in us as a, as a glory to come after the return of Jesus Christ. Ha <laughs> ha, no. That glory is our fundamental calling in the Christian faith. Peter says, called 
to glory and virtue. We're called to glory and virtue. When Jesus was praying for us before he ascended, he said, I have given them my glory. The very glory with which the Father has given the Son, that very glory he gave you. So at that transition from darkness to light, that transition from death to life, that transition from natural to spiritual, God gave you a life. You received a seed, which is the word of God in your spirit. And then you obtained life. It's called everlasting life. It's called the Greek word is Zoe, the very life of God himself. That's the work of the word, being born again, not of the, of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. With it, there is no death. With it, there is no death. There is no death in the word. Glory to God. There is no death in the word. Nothing dies in the word. Nothing should die in the world. Jesus walks to a young girl. And she's dead. And then he says, Talitha, Kumai, or Kumi, which is interpreted, damsel, I say, arise. But in another language, was it Aramaic? It meant girl wrapped up in the word arise because some words in some languages mean other words in other languages and jesus spoke mostly in aramaic are you following what i'm saying so the deeper revelation is that which is wrapped in the word should not die hey glory to god it should not die it cannot die it should not die there's an indelible command there and it cannot buy die sorry because the word of god is incorruptible for it to die it has to come out of the word but once it stays within the word it cannot die it cannot die and you have to believe it oh but i believed god and i was in the word every day i was listening to sermons no 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 your mind was in the word <laughs> your mind was in the word don't confuse those two things you see, when you have a relationship with the word of God from your mind, it is different from having a relationship with the word of God from your spirit. Some people think that those things are the same. They are not. That is why two men can say one thing and they get different results. Yet they all say the same words. They all say it in the name of Jesus. And with one man, some authority and power come with, comes with that name and with another, nothing happens. Because it's the principle of life that justifies that revelation that you claim to know in or about God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when man falls, the Bible says, verses 19, Romans, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature those are the things created, was made subject to vanity. That means was led to die. The living things you see were led to die. Trees were never meant to die. Nothing was meant to die. Even leaves were not meant to fall off trees. Come on. So he says it was subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had sub subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. That means everything you see living is, is groaning in pain. Why? Because it's not its nature to shed leaves. It's not its nature to, to have a, 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 a fruit fall off and it cannot grow it. And it has to wait for the seasons of the fallen world for it to grow fruit. If you understand that kind of world, your revelation about provision changes. It changes. Because imagine that Adam and Eve in the garden were never cautious of luck they did not know anything called luck 
Imagine being born in a world where you're not conscious of, the, of lack. You don't even know that that word exists. Just imagine that word. So whatever you need is available for you. Imagine that world for a second. Imagine that world for a second. So lack is a sign of a fallen world. I said lack is a sign of a fallen world. That is why no child of God should lack. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the things which were freely given unto us by God. Why do you think that when the Holy Spirit comes inside you, he tries he, as much as possible to show you whatever was freely given by God? Why does he not open your conscience to lack? Because it's not the way of God to communicate the language of lack to the redeemed. It's not the language of God to communicate the language of lack to a new creature. It's not the language of God. And therefore, the new creature, in its progression of knowledge and revelation, one of the things that we are delivered from is the spirit of lack because it's the conscience of a corrupted world. Did you understand it? The spirit of lack is a conscience of a corrupted world. As you are yielded to corruption, so it is the place of lack. But there's a man who lacks health. Why? Because he's in a fallen world where sickness is. You see where I'm coming from? Whatever you lack, it's because of your consciousness to the fallen world. So if the consciousness of a man can be elevated through the experiences of revelation, it means that the, the, the finer you start to see life and the more you start to deal with the things of the earth as though. That is why Jesus goes to a tree and it has no fruit. But he carries no conscience to lack. And because the tree defiled his conscience, he cast it. That's why Jesus cast that tree. He did not cast that tree to show off. You know, I'm Jesus. Can I cast it? Huh? Can I show it? I can cast it. Huh? Let me cast it. You die. No. He walks to this tree and it defiles his conscience. It disturbs him. It answered. It talked to him. And the Bible says, he answered it. He answered it. Okay? That means it communicated. He came to it and the tree said, you, I'm not going to give you fruit. You look like a human being. The Bible says, he answered. Underline that word answered. He answered and said to it. That means it spoke to him. These things speak. These things speak. However rich the can, it spoke to you. Some of you, even your mobile phones are speaking, you're just not listening. They're falling out of your hands, then you pick them up and then they, they slide again, you understand? Then they get lost. The mobile phone is saying, you don't look like me, you don't fit me anymore. Fire! And then you say, Apostle, I'm rejected. No, you're not rejected. You're not rejected. You've just refused to go where you belong. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you, some things need to, they need to take, they need. Do you know that God can start taking things out of your life because you've refused to grow? Because they don't look like you anymore? No, 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 no. Look at our natural life. When a child is growing, your father buys you a very nice shoe. And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad gave me a good shoe. And then you start growing up. The next thing you know, every time you're putting in your African foot, it can't fit. You fix it in, you pack it, you tie rubber band on it, and then you va. Then you start walking like. <laughs> and some, some shoes, when they get tired, they just open their mouth and say, let's go, brother, let's go. <laughs> so the front part opens and the leg comes out. Meaning, you have outgrown your shoe. Some of you have outgrown your jobs. You've outgrown those businesses. But you don't know. Some of you pastors have outgrown your church buildings. Come on somebody. Some of you have outgrown your cars. The car looks at you and even refuses to open. 
Then you start saying, fire, fire, fire on the mountain. You, you're going to open. A, that spirit that refuses me to. A lady called me. <laughs> a lady called me and told me, Apostle, things are rejecting me. And she was crying, seriously. Everything is rejecting me. I even reached over, but the TV refused to work. How old is that TV? Come on, somebody. Stop blaming the devil on everything. Some things you have outgrown already. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. They steal your laptop. You say, oh, oh, oh. It was its time up. That's called faith. And then you say another person, oh. <laughs> what will I do with that? What? 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 What will you do? What, what will you do? Glory to God. So Jesus speaks to that tree because his conscience is aligned to the will of the Father for mankind. You see what I'm saying? With that boldness, that tree had to die because it had disobeyed a higher law of the consciousness of the Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. So some of us, because we've lived in a fallen world for so long, we actually assume that that's how God has designed the earth to be. No. Creation itself is in pain. Trees look at us and say, uh, they're waiting for our manifestation. Whatever that looks like, I'll leave to the interpretation of your language. They're waiting for our manifestation. There are things that trees see and they start jumping. Glory to God. There are things that the, 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 the lakes and rivers see and they start skipping. The Bible says mountains shall skip. Imagine a mountain saying, Ooh, Apostle! <laughs> Put your name. <laughs> Glory to God. That's the earth agreeing with you. Because you're living daily in the consciousness of God's mind concerning you. So the Bible tells us that from that fall, creation was subject to vanity unwillingly. It, was, it wasn't willing, but because of a fall of man, everything started to corrupt. And then he tells them, from the sweat of your brow you shall eat. From today, you're going to have to dig. Seasons are going to have to come and rain is going to have to fall. Before that, there was a watering from the earth. And everything was provided. Now you're going to have seasons on your life. That is why when you become born again, you have to get another revelation of what God calls seasons and times. Do you know when you come to the revelation of the new birth, seasons and times change? Can I tell you the secret about these things? You see, the provision of revelation, the gift of revelation, the experience of revelation was the answer that God gave the church to provide for our own seasons. In fact, when you understand the way God has designed the new life, you will discover that each one of you has the ability to create your own age or period in the times of men the worlds because it's all in the mystery of faith for by faith the bible says we understand that the world's eon periods were framed by the word of god so any man or woman who understands the mystery of faith has the ability to create a world and if you have the ability to create an eon, then you have the ability to create and command your season. Do you know, like the Bible says, that having eyes they do not see. I think Isaiah said it. Having ears they do not hear. Their hearts cannot understand. They are dull of hearing. And then Jesus comes in the New Testament and said, having eyes they do not see, having ears they do not hear, neither can their hearts comprehend or apprehend this. But he says, least at any time they should understand with their hearts and 
hear, hear, hear with their ears and, and see with their eyes. And he said, should be converted and I should heal them. He did not say will be converted and I will heal them. He said should be converted and I should heal them. But you have to underline the word least at any time. Now this is Jesus giving a glimpse into the world to come. The ages to come. So the Bible speaks of men which have seen or tested the powers of the ages to come. One of the powers, I could teach about that, the powers of the ages to come. I could teach them. All right, I know a couple of them. When he could talk about powers, he didn't use power, but the powers of the ages to come. I, I could teach about those powers. And one of which is to command your season. When you learn that, even when it's dry, in the world you can make it rain in your world when there is a casting down for men the bible says you shall say there shall be a lifting up when they're saying now money is scarce you can actually create a season where you have the money when they say it is hard to build this you can actually create a season where it's your easiest to build did you know that in COVID, the biggest percentage of the billionaires in the world became ten, uh, many times, some, some actually were 10 times richer. Some. Majority of them were richer than they were before they entered COVID. So how is it that the billionaires, the biggest number of billionaires in the world became richer in COVID and there's somebody who lost a job in COVID, there's somebody who lost a house in COVID, there's somebody who lost a car in COVID, there's somebody who can't take their children back to school because of COVID, yet in the same world you live, breathe and eat, there is a man who has become 10, 15, 13 times way richer in the very period when there was a casting down. Simple. He knew how to command his season whether he it was deliberate or not deliberate there is a pattern and law or principle that commands these things it exists it exists it exists it exists, it exists. It exists. as part of the powers of the ages to come that in the worlds to come there might be or will be a manifestation of god that quite does not agree with the usual predictable sense that many of us have had in our minds because of our fallen nature and our indifferent and immature interpretation of Christ. Let me tell you, I told people that in the last days, God has spoken very keenly and distinctly that the church is going to be feared. This is not a promise, it's truth. It's not only a promise, it's truth. We are about to do things that people will call us and ask us how in this economy how in this universe how in this period how in these days and we're gonna tell them we actually can command our days somebody shout hallelujah the bible says teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto your wisdom the greek word there to number is to appoint our days Woo. do you know what that means the hebrew sorry the hebrew word there to appoint, to number doesn't mean you seek God and then he shows you what you're, whatever you're going to become and then you try to live after that script. Because by the liberties of the spirit, uh, that is not how so God has designed the world and purpose. No assignment looks like that. Did you know that? Some of you think, oh, you know, this is how God created me to be, that I'll be this, I'll be that. No, that will contradict the liberties of the spirit. Why then would he say, whosoever shall ask? Why then would he say, whatsoever ye shall ask? So then what is that which you designed for me to have or not to have, yet you have given me the liberty to have whatever I want to have or cannot have? And God is saying, no, it's in the distinctions of revelation in how much I have been revealed to you and how much you are able to access by how much I have freely given you for as far as we are concerned, I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. You just have not yet understood the mystery of access. Just don't know how things are accessed. And if you've not even matured just from separating the precious and the vile to separating the expedient and lawful, I cannot even trust you with such liberties because if you get to that place, you will spoil. 
and yet it's more important to me god says to grow you to the separation of such because if i don't then you realize why even as christ the rich the, the son of god who i believe had everything to his disposal did not need to work with money because if taxes needed to be paid the mouth of a fish would provide for it there's a, there's a wisdom there there's a wisdom there it separates that mean that man which lasts from the man which is under purpose when you understand the way of purpose you get rid of so much baggage now i'm talking to ministers some things are lawful to you but they're not important it's not important to have 20 mercedes benzes it's not important even if you can have them because you have the liberty to access them you're not going to drive all of them you understand what I'm saying? Whether you have a Casio or a Rolex, they're telling us time. So I'm not saying you can't buy yourself some Rolex. No, no. Oh, Ugandans, Rolex is another thing. Forgive me, you guys that are watching from across the world. Here in Uganda, we have a, a food called a Rolex. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a Rolex watch. Somebody on my left was getting hungry. And they were asking themselves how a Rolex tells time. <laughs> Pragmatic interpretation. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. And for God to take you through that conversation and help you understand how the world works. So you invest and put your time where it really matters because you have one life that is maturity. And not many people are able to tell the difference. A man can sit over a, a, a plate of food and you can tell that they don't tell the difference by just how they eat. Yeah, I, 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 sometimes I sit in restaurants and I'm like, wow. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? You were raised in a very poor house. Your family did not have much and then the Lord made you wealthy. And then you built a 30 bedroom house. How many rooms are you going to sleep in? One. May your three children, plus your relatives, your adopted kids, seven of the 30. Why? They just tell you, leave me alone. You don't know what I went through. Now, let's have a conversation on that kind of bondage. <laughs> because when you talk about bondage, some people think of bondage on one side. Nelson Mandela said something. He said that we looked at the bondage of men in prisons, but we never examined the bondage of the men which put them in prison. The, the, the guy who comes to Nelson Mandela, and Nelson Mandela is saying that we are equal before God, and his brain tells him, lock this kind of brain up for 27 years of his active life. That man is more bound than the man he has put in prison. So when we talk about deliverance, some of you, your deliverance, first dimension. That demon of your father, whoo, 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 whoo. then your wig falls off, fire, whoo. <laughs> and your shoes roll out. Oh, I'll kill her. I'll kill her. I'll kill her. I will kill her. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 uh, let me tell you, that's a very low level. That's a very low level. I feel I even feel sorry for Christians who can go for the I mean, when they cast out those things, greater is he which is in you. You have not yet known who you are. The trouble of that man of God is that he, you don't know who you are. And some men of God enjoy it. They call it calling. <laughs> so they just fire, 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 fire. Then you ask a Christian, 20 years, you're still rebuking that same thing. 15 years, you're still taking that thing off. 25 years, 30. Fire, first. I am fasting for 40 days. You fasted for 40 days cycles for the last 20 years. Dealing, for, dealing with the same thing. You met since you were a teenager. 
So let's just say it leaves you. And you still stay in a third world <laughs> quotient. Now, do you understand that some people don't, don't even get that difference? Because we were raised in local churches where food was a miracle. I said, brothers and sisters, <laughs> I eat food. <laughs> I eat food. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God, I eat food now. I turn and eat my meat and eat sausages. My children come and take milk. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's the difference between that one and the guys in, in, from Egypt who are saying, we miss the cucumbers, the watermelons, the garlics and, and leeks that we used to eat? Because their deliverance is in melons. And then they eat chicken and they say, oh, God is good. They built, oh, God is good. <laughs> You know, the Lord has been good. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> what the Lord has done for me. There's something they call food drunk. Eh? Food drunk. There are people who get food drunk. They eat. <laughs> and, and their eyes go in angle theater. They're like, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done. <laughs> What about nations? What about dreaming for your continent? What about leading in your career? What about dreaming bigger than 100 million people? What about building an idea that can touch 4 billion people? That's freedom. So Jesus tells the Jews, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And they say, we have never been under bondage to any man for we are sons of Abraham. Yet they are under Roman rule. That means that they adjusted to bondage long enough that it started to look like liberty. And there are people who are like that. You have adjusted. Your whole world has, has, has adjusted to so much bondage that even in that bondage now, those are the testimonies. Can you believe me? I was at work today and somebody tipped me 100,000. Oh, hallelujah. I serve a miracle working God. Oh, 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 Felicia. You are supposed to lend to nations. That's not the conversation of a $100,000 tip. When it says, ask ye of nations. You're still bound, you don't know. If your testimony is a 100,000 tip at the time when I needed a shoe. Come on now. <laughs> that is why at many levels some people need more help than we are able to explain to them. Some of us, let me tell you, are really free. So one day if we can really have a discussion to talk about freedom, Liberty. To talk about deliverance as it should be. Some of you, when you understand it, the day you understand it, the day you understand it, you realize how deceived the world is. Some of you are working under the fallen system of Babylon. It is determining how you dress, how you eat, how you sleep, who you relate with, how everything about you, your hair, the kind of hair person to, that, that catches your hair, the kind of shoe you should wear, and you're saying, I'm free to buy any shoe I want. Are you sure? My goodness. One time I was in Malaysia, and a man, a, a man bought his wife a bag of $30,000 for a birthday. Woo -woo -woo -woo. Yes, $30,000. Ugandan money, how much is that? 90 what million? 100 million for a bag? Of course, my Ugandan person will say, eh, <laughs> these people can spoil. <laughs> spoiling is relative. Tell your neighbor, spoiling is relative. <laughs> you can only spoil when you know how much he has. When you can assess it. Some people are so filthy. So filthy. They're not where you are. They don't think where you are. They're not even under the laws you're under. The laws you're under, they have paid out of them. And not many people are able to understand what I just said. I promise you, even if you say I'm in, you don't. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. 
But thank God for the word. Because as truth comes, there is a liberation and the church is growing every day to certain realities. And part of my mandate on the earth was that. To share and reveal these things. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> so, in this fallen world, back to what I was trying to tell us. Everything is corrupt. Everything is, is subject to change and decay. Everything you see, and that's okay. And God says that the church carries the responsibility of bringing life to everything that is dead or dying. That's our fundamental responsibility. But until we learn to create our own eons, ages, and provide for our own seasons in those ages, we will never do exceptional things. You will never do exceptional things. The way of faith is interpreted from a fallen mindset. And that is why many of us believe for things that by God, we're not even supposed to believe for, but because it is faith, it works even in those little things. And it becomes for the sons of men, testimonies. But if this contemplation should be elevated to the optics of the revelation of God, we will be so shocked how far many of us within the miracle life we live, are fallen from the mind of God concerning destiny and humanity. We will be shocked. We will be shocked. A man which was not a new creature, which did not have the rights and privileges that you have, would fight his enemies and stop the sun because he needs to slay every last one of them. And the Bible says his testimony cannot be made complete when yours is not added. Because there is something that incompletes him. And it's hidden in the mystery of the new birth. And how much power is available. Jesus looked at us and said, you shall speak to that mountain, be thou removed from your the place and be thrown in the sea. And how we melt down that revelation to the flu and cough that has disturbed you for a week. This mountain of flu, basket, mountain of flu. Jesus said, you shall speak to that mountain. He, he was talking about a mountain, not a flu that can be healed by vitamin C. Somebody said, God help us. And so with the journey that I'm on now is to unplug and plug. So in a few years, if you see us crazy, mm -mm, in a few years, if you see some of us so crazy, you see, one time I studied the life of Jesus Christ, and that's even a sermon I can teach about. I studied the life of, do you know at one particular point, the family of Jesus thought that man was mad at one particular point. They thought that he was deranged. And they tried to help him, take him out of the public. His own biological family. You see? So I understand why Paul says, if I'm in my mind, it is for your sake. But if I'm out of my mind, it is for God. And I've almost realized this, that no man can really live a perfect life of faith and be in the mind of men. That is why when they stop understanding us, don't worry. The mom misunderstood you are. Now, if this finds a person who is really mad, I'm in trouble. And look at your lady. If this finds a person whose wires, like some seven or eight wires are off, oh, they can go back with more madness. <laughs> No, no, no. First, get this in the realm and revelation of truth. And I know some of the things we are speaking are dangerous to the immature. Because you're going to try things you're not prepared for. But sometimes we are torn between let us not speak it so we don't stumble, the unstable. Or let us speak it and get men advanced. And when we meet the unstable, we shall help them. What do you choose? Advance. We shall deal 
with the fanatics later. But we need the flame. 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 Glory to God. So, when you study why many people say, why do you preach grace? This is why. Because the fundamental law given in, a, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 is better or greater is the beginning of a thing. I mean the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. God has designed the perfect world by him for his sons and daughters to have a better end than the beginning of anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a law. Receive this oracle as a fundamental law set by God to them who know him. That everything that you have begun should have a greater ending. That's the will of God. So then how can we teach that which kills? The Bible says the letter kills. How can we teach that which kills, yet we want the end of a man to be greater than their beginning? Do you understand why we can't teach the law? The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 7 verses 10, it says the commandment which was ordained to life I have found to be unto death. So if it is unto death, so how can I teach men from life to death? That's a fallen world. That's how the fallen world sees. That's how it functions. That when somebody is born in this world, People are, yay, they call them bundles of joy, yay, congratulations, your little boy, oh, congratulations, okay? And the day that person dies, people what? Weep. That's the way of a fallen world. That is why the day some of us go to heaven, if Jesus is not yet back, my goodness, you'll see parties. You'll see parties. People will be like, yeah! Do you understand what I'm saying? Because... It will be a life fully lived in purpose. And it shall be a greater end than the way we began life. Believe me, the, day, the way you were born is not the way you will die. You will die in a greater glory than the way you were born. Shout amen. That's just the way of the fallen world. They come from light to darkness. You know, from young age, youthfulness. Huh? And then they say, you know, I'm growing old. I found a Christian saying, I'm growing old. That's just the fallen world. It's light, darkness. Strength, weakness. Wisdom, folly. They come from greater to lesser. That's the fallen world. And refuse to be a part of the fallen world. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why in the way of God, the pattern is, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Why does it come in the morning? Because it's the way of God to take you out of weakness into strength. To take you out of darkness into light. The Bible says you've been translated from darkness into light. To take you from death into life. To take you from failure to progress and success. It's just the way of life. God has designed to take you from foolishness to wisdom, to take you from failure to glory. That's just how God has designed your life. And you have the opportunity to get a hold of it tonight or live under a corrupted pattern. But that's just the way of God. Night, weeping, joy in the morning. And the Bible says you're children of the day. <laughs> Do you understand what I just said? He says you're the children of the day. Why? Because that's where joy is. That's where happiness is. Isaiah 51. He says verses 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come out with what? Singing unto what? Zion. And ever 
everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall be, shall be away from them, shall flee away from them. It is the way of God for you to wake up into greater glory and joy tomorrow morning. Saturday, you're going to be happier than you were on Friday. Sunday, you're going to be happier than you were on Saturday. October is going to find you happier than you were in September. November, here we come, we're going to be happier than we were in October. And by the time December is here, oh my God! Even when you study the Jewish feasts, I think there's one last one, is it the one of Tabernacles? It, it happens in autumn towards the end of the year. It is the feast of celebration, of joy, of parties and spoiling and feeding. Do you know why God always put that feast last? Because he was spelling the end of the cycle of the year. They are supposed to end happy. You are supposed to finish happy. You are supposed to finish with greater joy. The Bible says so is the path of the just. It shines brighter and brighter and to a perfect day. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. When you start carrying such consciousness, it does not matter what you are going through right now. It doesn't matter what is not working right now. It doesn't matter what is not clicking right now. It doesn't matter what is not adjusting. It does not matter what is not responding. All things are working together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose so it means you have to tune yourself and life that way we used to sing greater things are yet to come greater things are still to be done in the city now put it in your house greater things are yet to come and greater things are still to be done in my heart now speak it to your body they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength <laughs> my body did you understand what i just said the Bible says he renews our youth. So as the world grows older, oh, 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 some of us, <laughs> some of us, we are just getting healthier and healthier. My God, my God. Recently, we're talking, Pastor Zah, we are playing basketball with 20 year old, 15 year old boys, and you run, and the boy can't catch you. Hey! But some of you, you're, you're 35, you're, everything is, you're dying. <laughs> you, by the time you reach your car, you'll be like, <gasps> Fire! <laughs> from death to life, from weakness to strength, glory to God. Pastors, our ministries are getting bigger and bigger, greater and greater whether they leave you hey <laughs> you think people have, people have not left funeral some have but we add chairs every thursday do you understand what i'm saying because i am healed i'm i'm i'm, I'm connected to that promise that I'm going to be bigger and greater and stronger tomorrow. Whether they send you that money or they don't send you that money, you will advance. Whether they talk good about you or talk ill about you, you will still go forward. Thus saith the Lord, greater is a thing in its end than it is in its beginning. And as you approach the end of everything, it shall be better. It shall be better. It shall be better. Even a drunk man, one time when Jesus turned water into wine, he said, no, 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 this thing was the one. So, <laughs> supposed to come first, said that the bad wine comes last. That's the fallen world. <laughs> With the perfect world, the better wine comes later. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor the worst has already happened. Greater days are ahead of you. That is why in the first miracle, the better wine came late. It did not come early because Jesus would not confuse that order. So it is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Greater days are ahead of you. Greater months are ahead of you. Greater years are ahead of you. Greater things are coming. I don't care whether it's working now or it's not working. Just tune into faith mode and say that I will believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Whether I have money for rent or I don't have it, greater days are yet to come. Whether I have transport back home or I don't have it, greater days are yet to come. Whether I walk or I have a car, greater days are ahead to come whether i rent or i have built yet or not built or i have a house that is not yet well finished it doesn't matter where you are in life this is what i know for sure even tomorrow morning as i speak you are going to wake up happier he has promised you that your joy on your head shall be forever and he shall take away mourning and sorrow Hallelujah, glory to God. I look at you in the next 10 years and I need shades because your years are going to be so bright. They're going to be so shining. They're going to be so progressive. They're going to be so advantaged. Glory to God. That's what Paul was saying. Brethren, the sufferings that are for this moment, that's why I'm trying to tell you, some of you must have an upper beat. It has not worked, but had an. Yes, I know the man has not yet come, but had an. Yeah, the man has not yet come, but refuse to take your body to a guy because you're desperate. Ghana, Ghana. Ah! Say no. Things will change in Jesus' mighty name. I can believe God. I have believed God. I will believe God. Don't sell yourself short. Don't compromise. Come on. Don't get things you're not supposed to get. Don't, don't go places you're not supposed to go because you're desperate. No. Harden and say, God, I have believed that you which began a good work in me, you will see it to accomplishment to the day of Christ. Marakotago. There are people who think they know you. They don't. They don't. I told people when I was still pastoring to 50 people, 20, I told them some of you think you know us, but you don't. Where you think Fanero to be is not where it is. Some people think they know me, but they just discover every day that they don't. And that's how it shall be until the day we go to heaven. Claim that on your life. May you become so unpredictable, incalculable, indescribable because of the way God will work in your life. When they think you've come to the end, they will discover it was just another beginning. Glory to God. So when I tell you we are shaking Uganda, we mean it. When I tell you Africa, we are coming, we mean it. When I tell you world, we are coming, we mean it. When we came to preach, we did not come to preach only to our community. No, we say to God that we have to preach from the North Pole to the South, from the East to the West, to the highways and byways. We'll preach to the Antarcticas. We'll preach in the deserts. We'll preach on the islands. We'll preach underwater. We'll preach on water. We'll preach in the air. We'll preach out of space, wherever we have to go but by the time we leave this world they will say there was a generation that knew God that is why when you dream start dreaming so big because God has told you how your end should be when you're planning plan so big because God has told you how your end should be when you're praying pray so big because God has told you how your end should be do not spare he says expand and enlarge your tent and he tells them spare not in other words don't hesitate i'm in charge if you want it big make it big i'm in charge i will do it 
fully persuaded that the God which promised was also able to do. Somebody say it in Luganda and Seba Tulinde. Now for my Johnny who comes from Northern Ireland, <laughs> but Tulinde is a German word. <laughs> no, no, it's a Luganda word meaning let them wait for us. They will see. Glory to God. Get to your feet. We, we are going to pray. We are, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. Mararagozagota. Hmm. 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 Mararagodego. Greater is the end of a thing than its beginning. Greater is the end of a thing than its beginning. You will end well. You're coming out. You are coming out. It's an exodus. You are coming out. You are not meant to stay in that disease. You are not meant to stay in that frustration, in that little small shack of a house. You are not meant to stay there. No, that is not who you are. That's not where you belong. Now I want you to open your mouth and speak to God. Just take a few minutes and receive this word tonight. Receive these words tonight. Receive these words. Receive these words. Speak words. To let this thing settle in your heart and as we are praying this few minutes some of you should co let's continue praying and if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ and you say today I want that God you're talking about come right now and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior while the rest of us pray if you're there and you say I want to be born again Jesus shed his blood for you he is the light of your darkness he is the health of your continents. He is the answer to your troubles. He came that you might have life from the death that you're in and have it more abundantly. Today come and receive life. Your life is going to change for good. As some of us are raising our voices and praying. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Marora gotika sola bane. Come on, pray. Pray. Command your seasons now. Create a season now. <laughs> oh, I feel the anointing. Somebody just receive it where you are. Just receive it. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I feel the power that changes circumstances that changes things, that changes days. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Open your mouth and talk to God. It is happening right now. It is happening right now. It is happening right now. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh I'm blessed.
into salvation and then I'll those of you who are here just repeat these words after me say Lord Jesus I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory today I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior Amen even those of you who have prayed online and some of you in the streaming centers Allow me to pray over you and say, God is going to keep you, preserve you, and guard you, deliver you. Kidney disease is healing. I command healing to that kidney. Help her. Power of the Holy Ghost. Liver disease is healing. Somebody here has liver disease. God is healing you now. Receive it in Jesus' name. Somebody here has been having a very bad headache, migraine. Power of the Holy Ghost. Lose him. Go. 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 I'm sensing five spirits of death. Wherever they are, there are five people here. You have a spirit of death. You spirit of death, wherever you are, I command you right this very second. Come out! They will not die early. They will live a full life. Spirits of death, go! We're not ready to die now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who have made that prayer, kindly walk there, want to take your names and numbers and pray for you and follow you up. I'll see you on Sunday in the second service, 11 to 1 p.m. You come in the second. We have the first one, but the first one, I want you in the second because it's longer and I can have more time with you. For the rest of us, allow me to pray a blessing over you. This word has been planted. It is watered. It is established in your heart. It's going to bring forth fruit that will echo through eternity in your ministry, in your business, in your career, in your jobs, in your marriage, in your dreams, in your aspirations, in everything you do. You are going to do things that this world has never seen before. Receive the anointing to do things out of this world. Take it in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Amen. See you on Sunday. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? Jesus. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app. Available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Finero. Make manifest.